There have been more deaths in Gaza overnight following an Israeli airstrike. The Hamas-run health ministry there says as many as 73 people died, though that figure is disputed by the Israeli military, who say it is investigating. The Hamas leader, Yahya Sinwar, was killed earlier this week and the region remained on the brink of yet more conflict as Israel is expected to strike Iran and continue its invasion of Lebanon. I can speak now to the president of the Palestinian National Institute, Mustafa Barghouti. Good morning, Mr. Barghouti. Good morning to you. Um, you have for many years been an opponent of Hamas. Is any part of you glad that Yahya Sinwar is now out of the picture? Absolutely not. Uh, I haven't been an opponent of Hamas or any other Palestinian faction. Uh, I was always an advocate of nonviolence, for sure. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, the killing of Sinwar uh, will not really help or improve the situation because Sinwar was not the obstacle to achieving a ceasefire. The real obstacle to achieving ceasefire is Netanyahu. And Netanyahu was seeking an image of victory uh, through killing of Sinwar. What Sinwar gave him is a completely different image, an image of failure, since uh, Netanyahu could not find Sinwar for a whole year. And even when they killed him, they didn't know they were killing him. Uh, in my opinion, uh, Sinwar uh, will be perceived as a person who fought for his country and who fought for his people, and not as a terrorist, as the Israeli propaganda tries to confirm. On the other hand, the most important thing here, Ishu, and you mentioned that in the beginning of, the, of your presentation, at this very moment, Israel is, is conducting a horrible massacre in the northern part of Gaza, where 400,000 people... Can, can I just thousand people are besieged and starving. Can I just re, can I just interrupt you for a second? Um, let us perhaps remember that Mr. Sinra, Sinra uh, ad, accept, admit, admitted that he was responsible for what happened in October the seventh, which can only be described as an atrocity. That Hamas is a proscribed terrorist organization, not a government. So there is not really an equivalence here. Um, when you say he was not the obstacle, uh, you may take the view that Mr. Netanyahu uh, was, is an obstacle, as some people do. But it may also be true that Mr. Sinwar and the group around him also do not want peace. Is that not true? No, it's not true. Because uh, Hamas, what, Hamas wants a ceasefire. Why don't they just stop? Why don't they just stop shooting people? Because Netanyahu is refusing to stop fighting. Hamas agreed to the Biden proposal, who claimed that the proposal was coming from Netanyahu himself. But then Netanyahu changed his mind, and Mr. Biden was not honest enough to say that it was Netanyahu who's obstructing the deal. Hamas was ready for the deal, not only Hamas, but all Palestinian groups. And the deal would be that there will be an exchange of prisoners and all Israeli prisoners would be released and come home safe. And a certain number of Palestinian prisoners would be released. But that all should happen when there is a complete ceasefire. Netanyahu does not only want to continue the fire. He is expanding this war, as you have said, into Lebanon. And now he wants to create a huge war with Iran hoping to drag even the United States into this war. If it, about the, if, 7th, if, if, about, about the if, 7th of October, if you allow me just to say two words. Yes, carry on. The 7th of October was not a cause. It was a result. It was a result of the fact that Israel has established ethnic cleansing against Palestinians since 1948. Sinwar himself, like 70% of the population of Gaza, are refugees displaced from their hometowns in can, 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 I, can I just stop you for and, a second? And, and you, you keep going back to this point, and, and it seems to me we do have to remind ourselves that on October the 7th, 1,200 people, most, many of whom were at a music festival, were young people, were killed brutally, and we saw that, uh, be, that happening uh, because the killers themselves released 
the, the pictures. Uh, it is, I think many people will be really struck by the fact that you, who has a, have a reputation as a moderate in Palestinian politics, seem this morning to be exonerating people who are killers, murderers, responsible for possibly the worst atrocity against Jews for 80 years. You seem to be saying, don't worry about that. Worry about the politics of Israel. Are, are you really saying that? Sir, you are misguiding the public by what you said. I am a person who is known to be an activist for peace. I was a negotiator at one point of time. I advocate nonviolence all my life. But I have to be honest and truthful. And in that sense, the problem with Western media, most of Western media, is that you present the situation as if the killing of an innocent Israeli civilian is a terrorist act. While the killing I, of I don't think that's a point that, uh, I think that's the point we're making. Let we, me I'm just talking about the facts here. Look, yeah, uh, let me finish. Let me finish. While the killing can, let, well, let me ask you. I, I've given you a good no, chance but, but to, 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 to make, say your piece. But the it, killing of 17, you never say that the killing of 17,000 children, Palestinian children, is an act of terrorism. And that the terrorist in this case is Netanyahu and his Israeli government. You never okay. mentioned the fact that 52,000 Palestinians. 40, okay. 70% of whom are civilians are killed Mr. by Israel. Mr. Barghouti, Why do you use I wish we had standard? more time. You have to use one standard for both sides. Mr. Barghouti, I wish we had more time, uh, but I can assure you we do report those matters all the time. But thank you so much for your time this morning. Okay.